Uh, welcome back, uh, my good buddy Greg Grant, CEO of Own America. And it's our time to really dig into some of the strategies and ideas and crystal ball-like uh, visions that we have for the future. Uh, Greg, let's keep talking about that. Before the break, we talked about your one-year uh, thought process. What's the, what does the next 10 years uh, look like in the housing investment space? I think it's going to be interesting. I think the, the sheer numbers of people that are invested in the U.S. housing market is going to uh, go up dramatically, dramatically over the next decade. And here's why. <clears throat> we talked about it in the first segment, this idea that Wall Street paved the way for a lot of innovation, a lot of technological development, a lot of professional management systems development to be able to handle thousands of properties across dozens of cities. Uh, and now that is all being, all that innovation is being repackaged for the larger audience. And so here's a way to think of it. In 10 years, there's going to be a brand that is synonymous with investment in real estate in America, right? There's, there's no brand today, right? There's going to be a household name. You've got Target, you've got Walmart, you've got Apple, you've got Cobalt Banker and Century 21, you've got Bank of America. There are brands that are tightly associated with their category, and there is a category, but there's no brand, mm. right? There, today, think about this. I'll give, you, I'll give you the stats in terms of the size of this market just to kind of wet your whistle. One way of looking at it is that there are more, uh, the market of houses for rent is as large as the market for apartments for rent. Meaning if you think of all the apartment buildings you've ever seen, and they're pervasive, they're everywhere, right? Big, small, and in between apartments. People think of houses as being something that an occupant lives in. I mean, an owner lives in, owner occupied, homeowner. They assume that a house is, is, is occupied by its owner. That isn't the case in a large, large number of cases. And so when you add it all up, it's as big as all the apartments. It's 12% of the households in the country. So 12% of the population live in a single family home that they rent, all right? Somebody owns all those houses, 17 million properties around the country that investors purchase, all right? There's a million mm. investor purchases every year. So according to the National Association of Realtors, 1 million houses are bought a year, which is 20% of all the houses bought, and they're bought by investors. And yet today, the services that those investors get stick because the industry that sells homes sells homes, presuming you're going to buy it and live in it, right? So whether it's Remax or Cobalt Banker or Keller Williams, the real estate companies, or if it's Zillow or Trulia or Realtor.com, the online platforms, one of the things they all have in common is virtually every shred of content on their website, every shred of strategy in their in their businesses, every shred of investment and resources in terms of developing new and awesome customer services are all geared towards the person who's going to buy the house and live in it. And virtually none of it was geared towards the person who's buying as an investment. So that's what we're all about is creating, like we want to be that brand, okay? But we may fall short. Somebody's going to be mm -hmm. because of the massive amount of economic activity that is generated by this group of people that buy a million properties a year, most of them are small mom and pop investors. Um, they're gonna have a store on Main Street or an office on Main Street to go to, to get taken care of in the future. And that'll be one of the big improvements. I can see that. I can, I can totally see that. So what does that mean then for investors in Atlanta for the next couple of years? What do we need to well, be paying attention to? Well, you know, Atlanta, any place, let, me, let me extrapolate because you said you can picture it. Let me, let me describe it vividly for you, okay? So you've got somebody who is a real estate enthusiast, a real estate junkie. Maybe they never even invested before. Maybe they graduated from high school yesterday. Yeah. Okay? Uh, or um, well, let's, let's use them. Or maybe they're a young couple that is recently married, having their first kid, whatever. Okay? Let's use them as an example. And they have it in their blood. They want to be an investor. They, they have a desire as a human being to set themselves up with financial abundance down the line, and they just naturally, intuitively see real estate as the way to do that, right? Mm -hmm. So I know, and you know, there are millions and millions and millions of people out there that fit that description. Mm -hmm. So now the question is they want to go about doing it. Today, when you go out there and look for help in executing that plan, you don't find very much, all right? And you can do this yourself. Go on, if you're listening and you're not driving, go to a computer, go to your phone, go to Google, and search real estate. Say, I want to buy real estate. You're going to see a bunch of websites, a bunch of real estate companies in your town across the country who want to help you buy real estate. But then you realize they keep talking about your home. And you're like, ah, that's not for me. I'm not, I already have a home. I want to buy real estate for investment. So you change your search. 
and you do real estate investing or something like that, mm -hmm. all those companies disappear. Every last one of the industry's incumbents go away. And what you're left with is, come to my seminar. I'm Greg, and I have a seminar, and I'm going to show you how to get rich in real estate. And the only <laughs> – like seriously, the only yeah. place you – right? You know what I'm talking about. It's pervasive mm -hmm. in the industry. Unfortunately, a lot of it – a lot of it's hucksters, right, that are selling you a get-rich-quick scheme and nothing much more. Yep. But the real telling thing is that if you decided you wanted to do that, meaning I, I want to secure my financial future and I want to do it with stocks and bonds, you've got no shortage of people to help you do that. right? You could walk into a Merrill Lynch office or a Charles Schwab office or go to eTrade.com. There is no shortage of super high-quality service providers, but in real estate, there's really none. They want to sell you a home to live in. They don't know how to do it. So the experience is you come in, you go online. You catch some content like this. You say, hey, you know, I'm a real estate junkie. I'm going to go to this website. You start learning. You start looking at property. You start messing with calculators. We have all that stuff. You'll find on ownamerica.com a website for real estate investors, which means calculators, projections, all these different tools that are designed around helping you figure out the story of the investment, the market you're investing in, the property. Feed your brain, right? Become an expert in your own way mm -hmm. on whatever market you're researching. And then as you're doing this, as you're listening to the free education we put out there, um, you start shaping your plan. Then you make a phone call and you make an appointment to meet somebody in your local town in a conference room where you sit down with somebody who's a well-dressed individual who's going to talk about your plan, who understands the concept of like, okay, Abby, congratulations on your wedding. How old are you? I'm 30. Right. How long until you retire? I want to retire at 55. Awesome. So we have 25 years. That's all the time in the world. How much money do you have to work with now, right? How much do you want to have that's paid off in 25 years? Mm. I wouldn't mind having 15 houses paid off. Okay, so let's pace it out. Let's pace it out. Now let's figure out what's important to you in terms of how much income you want to generate now versus how much income you really want to stock away to generate later. All these questions have answers, and the technology is there, and the know-how is going to be there to actually help you design that long-term financial plan like one of my f most popular chapters in my book, <laughs> it wasn't that popular of a book, but the best chapter was have a kid buy a condo. You have a new child, that child's going to mature in 18 years to go to college. Why don't you buy an investment property now that you mature the investment as well for 18 years and cover college that way? That really works as a college funding plan. Investment in property really works. Like, okay, I want to buy 20 properties. I accumulate them. All right. Then I start assigning individual uses for those properties. These ones over here are for income. These ones over here will be for me to be able to sell them and pay off our primary house. I'm going to sell these, pay off the vacation house. This one's for a Corvette, right? Whatever. I don't care. Right? Mm -hmm. Just go out and lay out the property list of what you want to buy, but you've actually got somebody on the ground who's going to work with you doing that. Um, and that's what's going to make it possible for people who want to do this to actually be able to execute. And so I see 10 years from now, it being very common that somebody has money in the stock market, has money in a 401k, and has three or four rental properties to go with it.